Happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to another Q&A strategy call. I'm just going to check to make sure that we are streaming directly into our Facebook group. We are also streaming into LinkedIn and YouTube for our guests who are not currently on Facebook. Um, if you do have a Facebook account and you're not already a member of our private community, now is the time to join. It is a very active Facebook community uh, where you can find a lot of support uh, from like-minded colleagues. It is called Scale Your Nutrition Practice, and there is a link to join. You just have to answer a few questions, and we'd love to see you there. Um, okay, let me just, here we go. I think we're good. So I'm going to check my volume. Oh yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. You know, ever since COVID, um, I, I've been in my kitchen, in my teaching kitchen by myself. So I've learned pretty well how to manage multiple pieces of technology. Just now I was opening up a ton of tabs and um, always want to make sure that you can see and hear me OK. It looks like you can. And so we are going to get started. Let me see here. Perfect. With our Q&A office hour and strategy call. So we are going to be doing a lot of screen sharing and show and tell. We've got a lot of new things happening. Uh, so if you've noticed that we've been a little quiet and maybe I'm sorry, a little late to respond to um, Zendesk tickets or like inquiries, it's because we have been so busy uh, working on new functionalities and new content for you and really improving your overall experience. That is one of my core goals for this year is to improve your experience with using our resources. So our members have access to basically two pillars of resources. One is the meal planning software, which we are always improving. We, there are always things in development and also the, re, the library of content. So there's two separate kind of pillars um, and ways that we support you in attracting, serving and retaining your ideal clients for your practice. Uh, oh, Stacy, welcome. Thank you for being here with me. So let's dive into, I think, the most exciting deployment. <laughs> and it wasn't a difficult thing, but it solved such a huge problem for our community, our library search functionality. So I don't know if you have logged into your library this morning, but if you haven't, you will notice something a little bit different. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner of your library, there is a search bar. Now, it's actually a tool where you can input content, like not content type, but like a keyword for content like brain health. That's the one I'm going to be using for our demo today. And it will tell you what content is in the library and where to find it. So it gives you a map for locating the content. Stacy, I know that you're excited about this. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. You guys have been really uh, very enthusiastic about this deployment this morning on the Facebook group. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay, let's start with, here we go. Perfect. All right, so now you can see it. We are on the main Living Plate RX library page. If you are a member, the way that you get to this page is through your dashboard. So your Living Plate RX dashboard is where the meal planner and all of the functionalities exist. But we do have inside of the Living Plate RX tab a link that takes you directly to your login page. So this um, library is housed on Kajabi. We were previously on Teachable. So if you're still logging into Teachable, you'll definitely want to transition over to Kajabi. It's a much better experience. Our entire library is now here with the exception of a couple of things, primarily the chef's content, because we're just trying to figure all of that out. And uh, it's all here now. So when you log in, you will get access. You can see I'm going to just scroll down here to all of your library content. Now, there are pages and pages of content. And every month, as you know, you receive new content. So our monthly content drops continue to be added. And so with the increased volume of content, it became much more difficult for members to identify where certain content was that they wanted to use. So that's why the search tool is so important. So let me just show you how it works. And then I'm also going to show you the new table of contents, which is at the front desk 
of your library. For those of you who don't know, I've shared it with you before, but my mom was a librarian for over 45 years in the public school systems, a, a variety of them. And so I understand the value of a front desk at a library and also a well-maintained card catalog. I'm dating myself now because they don't, obviously don't have card catalogs anymore. Uh, but here is the library search tool. You're going to click on that and it actually just brings you to a different page. Now, this is where we're starting. It's not ultimately where this search functionality is going to go. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to type in just like brain, just one keyword. You don't have to type in brain health, just type in brain if you're looking for any content related to nutrition and brain health. And when you click search, it's going to tell you the content that is available to you. So there's the ultimate guide to brain health, which is an ebook. There's social media, there's pillars of brain health, blog posts. So you can see where the different content is now. Right now, you will go to that collection and you will in that month and you will find that piece of content. Probably in about two weeks, I think we're going to have the whole library mapped out with active links. So you'll be able to click, for example, on this ultimate guide to brain health. You'll be able to click on an active link that will take you right to that piece of content. So no more searching. Uh, give me clap, clapping hand emoji if you're excited about this. I am thrilled because I know that it has been a pain point for our members. And so this for, for, uh, search functionality is really going to change the game for you. Now, if you go to the front desk, Nicole is saying, yay, Stacey saying, yay, great. Thank you for that. Uh, at the front desk, you will note that we have, just as before, the table of contents to the left here. Can you, I just want to make sure, yeah. You can see that. All right. To the left is a table of contents. Click on that at the front desk. And there you have an old card catalog. I couldn't resist throwing in that GIF. Uh, the new and improved table of contents is here. So you are going to think of it as your card catalog, catalog and guide to everything inside of your uh, nutrition education library. The Google Shake can take sheet contains the same results as you're going to see in the new search bar. The advantage to being able to see the spreadsheet is that you can view future content drops. So we are almost, almost uh, a month ahead with our content planning, uh, but probably by next week with the support of our content development board, we're going to have all of the content planned out for the next few months. So you'll be able to see what's coming. And we're going to talk about the importance of giving me um, input on what you want to see developed too. We'll talk about that a little bit later in this call. So you will be able to access your copy here, just like before you click on this link and you're going to make a copy of the new table of contents. Um, let me just finish uh, with the things to note here before I open up that link. So the oh, actually, let me just open it up. I think that will be better for you. So here is the new table of contents. Our Susan is saying she loves the search function. Kathy, so excited. Carrie, clapping hand emoji. Carmen, yes, thank you. Thank you, guys. Julie, I know. This is for you, Julie. This one's for you. <laughs> I know that you, this, Julie has been in a very positive way, the squeaky wheel saying, please help me. You need to develop the search functionality. So I'm so, so happy to finally bring this to you, Julie. We drop content in the same categories every month. It doesn't mean that we're married to these categories. If you want to see something different, you let me know. Sometimes we're going to mix it up like the how to wow carousel posts. I'm changing up the design a little bit just to freshen it up. You give me your feedback. If you like it, great. We'll stick with it. If not, we'll go back to the old version. Uh, but you know, you will have a very strong voice in what the content looks like and, and what content gets developed in the future. So to the left here, this first column is 2023. You will see it's frozen. So you, you'll be able to view all of the content types. So things like cooking videos, blog posts, courses, quote carousels, all the social media is here. Now the main category is in all capitals. So social media is the main category. The subcategory is how to wow, single food posts and stories. Social media is the one category of content that we drop every month that has multiple subcategories, but there will occasionally be subcategories for other content. For example, um, I can't think of an example right now, but <laughs> let's just leave it open um, to be able to have subcategories. So when it comes up in your search, the bold is the main category and the subcategory is going to be in lowercase. Hold on, I just want to open this up. Okay. 
I'm sorry, I lost you there for a second. Okay. You can scroll to the right and you will be able to see the different months. So we have January, February, March, and um, you can put your cursor on that and, and just move it to the right with your button or you can use your mouse however you want. Now you can take a look at July and see what we have already published. So super cool. Um, we've gotten a bunch of content in there for you. The content calendar was already published like two weeks ago, or like 10 days ago. Um, and we are actively dropping the content for July right now. So you can see all of that here. We still have a little bit to go. The copy that you make here is just a copy. It's not the active spreadsheet. So if you want to see an update, you just create a new copy and then you can delete your old one. Okay. Julie, you do not need to apologize. We love it when you tell us what to do. <laughs> That's great. Okay. So now you have access to 2023. You can see all the content. We are going to be plugging in probably by the middle of next week, all the content for August. And we're just going to keep marching forward until we have it through the end of the year. You also are able to see the 2022 content arranged very much the same way. So our goal here, we have two goals with this spreadsheet and then also with our search functionality. Number one is to get those active links in there for you, which shouldn't take us very long. I, I think probably within two weeks, maybe a little bit more, we'll have them all in there. Second is to get all of the legacy content in there. So I have been creating content for years and I started the library um, it, it wasn't organized this way. It was just getting content into the library to you know, get a critical mass basically of content in a library that I could sell as a membership. So that legacy content isn't here yet, but we are adding it. So don't worry. And I, I do think that the legacy content needs a little bit of love because we really, you know, inside of Canva, there have been developments of uh, new functionalities and new graphics, and it, it just makes things um, look better uh, in Canva now than it did you know, four years ago. And so I think we're probably going to have to refresh that content before we load it, but you eventually will have access to everything. But right now you have, um, let me just say, I keep losing you guys here, sorry. Um, right now you have access to all of this uh, active content from, the 20, from 2022 and 2023. Julie is saying, that was a lot of work. Pat yourselves on the back. Okay, boom, boom. Um, actually, uh, it, it it was a lot of discovery. We've been like hemming and hawing over this for the you know months now because I went into, this is a good lesson. I transitioned our library over to Kajabi because I knew that the experience was going to be better. I assumed that we would be able to install a search function for the site, but Kajabi, for whatever reason, does not allow you to do that. And it's very difficult to write custom code that doesn't kind of mess up the the, the site. Uh, so I am giving Stephanie Hoffenke from String Marketing all the credit here because she introduced me last Friday to a Google Sheets expert who created this in four hours. <laughs> and then he was able to help me through you know several brainstorming sessions. We were able to figure out how we could get it onto the site for you as a search function. So yes, so we'll pat ourselves on the back, Julie. Um, but it really was a team effort. And if it weren't for Stephanie giving me that resource, we would still be looking for a solution. Um, and this isn't perfect. This isn't the end for us. We are eventually going to be building our own platform to give you the best experience possible. But wow, this is light years ahead of where we were, okay? So you should all be very comfortable now finding the table of contents and uh, identifying content. Give me feedback. Let me know. You know, you can send me a DM or you can do a, a ticket in Zendesk with ideas for how to improve this. Uh, I don't think it's going to be perfect, primarily because of titles. I need to, uh, moving forward, be better at giving uh, descriptive titles to content. This is a perfect example right here. Can you see this? I've highlighted Shakshuka. So yes, you can search shakshuka and see that how to wow carousel, but I should probably add shakshuka with eggs, shakshuka with tofu. Say that really fast <laughs> three times. Um, things like pumpkin muffins, pretty self-explanatory, but power bites, you're probably not going to be searching for power bites, but you might be searching for peanut butter, right? And so maybe I should put, or nut butter, nut butter power bites. So uh, we are, you know, as you guys start using the functionality, let me know. 
you know, just let me, don't feel like you're complaining. I want to hear from you what's working and what's not, because that is the only way that we can improve how we serve you. Does anybody have any questions about the search functionality? Can you see, let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see this. Does anybody have any questions? Let me just move this over. Yeah, so you can just scroll to the right, scroll to the left. Oh, uh, two other things while you're thinking of your questions. Um, the Content Library Masterclass and the Meal Planner Masterclass I have included here in the table of contents. So you're not, they're not going to be available on the search because it's not um, the consumer facing content. This is the training for you. So if you wanted to quickly identify how to create a meal plan tab for my website, you can just click on this active link here and it will take you right to that content. See how that did that? How beautiful is that? Right inside of the library. Now, if you are not signed into the library, it's going to ask you because this is all behind a paywall. If you are not a member of our community, you will, you know, you're going to be asked to log into your library. So once you activate your membership, you get a login for the library. Um, but if you're already logged in, it'll do what it just did for you here. Carmen is saying, I've been looking for the welcome video for clients, but when I put it in the search function, I can't find it. I'm so glad you asked that question, Carmen, because I just answered the question. <laughs> um, the Those types of, um, that type of content is not going to be in the search function. That's really for the consumer facing content, only because everything about the meal planner and everything about the content library, it's all pretty tight and neat. It's all on one page. So if you're looking for welcome videos, you can look for it here. Uh, let's see here. Consumer facing meal planner tutorials. I'm going to click on that Carmen and that is going to take me right to my tutorials. That was easy. Less than one second to do that. All right. So you can refer Carmen to your table of contents. But honestly, for those kinds of things, you can just go into your, let me just go here, back to the library. Uh, you can just go into your uh, meal planner masterclass and you can find it there too. It's listed right here. You're welcome, Carmen. All right, uh, we have a question from Susan. Should we use the content request form to submit ideas? Yes. So Susan, let's go ahead and skip to that. Let me um, just come back on screen to say hello. Hello. All right, actually, I'm not going to be there. Let me go here so that, nope, we don't want that. <laughs> Wait a minute. I want it so that, yeah, there we go. All right, let me show you where you're going to submit your ideas. So um, I'm going to move this one up. Okay, so that was a library search tool. You can continue to ask me questions about that while we're on today. So I have a suggestion box. Again, no, my mom was a librarian and my mom was, you know, it's always such a good listener. She was really all about serving the students in her community. And she always wanted to know from them what books they wanted her to bring into the library and how she could better serve them. So she always had a suggestion box where you would write on a piece of paper and put it in the box. We have set you up at the front desk with a suggestion box. So yes, to answer your question, Susan, you should submit requests for content. You could submit requests for designs. You can submit requests for categories and also meal planning functionality. All of that gets put into the suggestion box. And now this suggestion box has been out there for about four weeks and I want to make sure that we're all using it regularly. So what we're going to start doing on the Facebook group is have Monday musings. Every Monday morning, I am going to post that link as a reminder for you to think about and consider what content you need in your practice that is not already available to you. And I want you to use, you don't have to respond to the Facebook group, but it's to that post, but it's going to be a reminder for adding things to the suggestion box. So let me show you where that is now. Let's go visit our front desk here. I'm going to access the content. And you'll see right here is the suggestion box and content recommendations. You click on that, scroll down, and there is a link to the content submission form. Hi, Jan. Welcome. Good to see you here. Hey, Dash. Uh, yes. Yeah, so make sure if you, uh, you know, if you're working with a client, and you're like, gosh, I wish I had this. Somebody had recommended, and I thought it was a really good suggestion. Uh, a kind of how to build your own electrolyte drink. So 
Um, you know, they're very popular kind of hydration mixes out there. I think it's called like, um, what is it? IV hydration, something like that. I'm not really sure what it's called. I, I have it at home because my son really likes it when he's um, working out. Uh, liquid IV, liquid IV, that's what it is. So how can they make their own um, mineral and nutrient rich kind of electrolyte fluid? And I think there's probably a recipe out there that we can develop. So that was a great suggestion. But we do the best way to submit suggest liquid IV. Thank you, Stacy. It's delicious. I tried the um, passion fruit and the tropical punch. They're both really tasty. Uh, but it'd be great if we had a sheet for how to build your own. So you want to use this link to the content submission form. When you click on that, it's going to bring you to a ClickUp form and you just enter your name because we'd love to know who's submitting the content. You're going to let us know what, what uh, category it falls into and then your content ideas. You can include notes and you can also drop an image. So if you're scrolling on Instagram and you're like, whoa, that's really cool. I think I want a graphic like that or I want a topic to be explored for a blog post around this, take a screenshot and upload it here. And then we can refer it. And links would be really good too. Really. So the more information you give us, the better. Um, we'll be able to create that content for you. All right. So that again is at the front desk for submitting content. And then look for the Monday Musings post inside of our Facebook group and we'll start generating some really great ideas. We'll get this year filled up and we're just going to move on into next year. So really appreciate your help and guidance with that. Okay. Uh, I want to, I'm actually going to move this down here. Let's talk about, I'm rearranging my agenda here. Okay. Let's talk about PDF cover page and intro page. Got some news for you today. So for those of you who are joining me, you're the first to know. You can now edit the cover page of your PDF uh, meal plan generator. You can also include images on your intro page. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is the PDF cover page and intro page. All right. I am inside of a meal plan that I created. This is my signature planner. Let me actually go back. Let me go back to the dashboard. Oops, I didn't want to do that. All right. Let me go into my signature planner for my methylation challenge. This is a challenge that I created uh, using the 3x4 methylation challenge meal plan. So let's find it here. Uh, here we are. Okay. So you want to go to configure for your meal plan. So if you want to create a unique PDF meal plan, either for a client or uh, for a meal plan, you could do it at both the client level and the meal plan level. Uh, you're going to need to make the change here, the, the edits here. So let me just scroll down. There's a couple of things I want to talk about here, but let's do the cover page first. So you can see I changed the cover image. So we have this cover image for the PDF that is just a collage, beautiful collage of uh, fruits and vegetables and whole grains and just healthy foods that we actually took that photo here at the in the Living Plate Teaching Kitchen. So you're free to continue to use that, but let's say you wanted to include an image of your practice. So I uploaded an image here of my teaching kitchen or an image of something else. Let's say you're doing a Mediterranean meal plan and you want a beautiful image of the Mediterranean. Uh, you can now change that cover image. All you need to do is click change the background image. And let me just do that here. You're gonna choose a file and you're just going to upload something that you created on Canva. Uh, Chris uh, was very kind to give you the dimensions here. So it's an eight and a half by 11 image. You create it in Canva and use a high quality image. You can use either stock photos or in this case, I used an image from my, um, my own collection and you just download it as a ping and then you upload it here. That's it, done. And I created it. Now I can, let me just click done here. I can include the standard title bar, which the title bar, which is this white bar here, or not. I can click this and not include that. The title bar will have your company's logo, the name of the meal plan, and your website. That we include that on the cover page, but you don't absolutely don't need to do that if you don't want to. Now let's move on to the intro page. The intro page is the second page of your meal plan that you're going to be printed printing. Again, this is for generation of PDF meal plans using your digital meal planner. 
I included a picture of myself, an image of myself that you can do it up front. You can do it in the signature. It can be an image of something else, whatever you'd like. Um, but you now have the ability to um, include an image. You add some content here and then you can save the meal plan and those changes will stick. Before I leave this page, something really important. This was something that has come up in the Facebook group a couple of times. Oh, hi, Celine. Welcome. Good to see you here. Hi, Raksha. Uh, if you create a non-calendar sequential meal plan, meaning week one, two, three, four, and just as a reminder, you have two options for meal plans. You have a calendar digital meal plan, and then you have a non-calendar digital meal plan. Now, the calendar meal plan follows a calendar. So anybody who's signed, let's say you're running a course, right? And um, a course, and it starts next Monday. You'll want everybody to start the meal plan next Monday. So it works that everybody kind of moves through the meal planner uh, according to the calendar of the program. But let's say you have an evergreen program or you just want everybody to come in at week one. You don't want dates assigned to it. It will still run Monday through Sunday, but there are no dates. It's week one, week two, week three, week four, five, six, however many weeks you determine. Once you establish, let's say, a non-calendar plan, so everybody's going to be coming in at week one, and you populate that, if you go back here and change it to a calendar plan or remove that non-calendar sequential function, you're going to lose all your work. It's not possible to make the content stick you know, between calendar and non-calendar. So um, in order to prevent that from happening, it only happened a couple of times and we were able to restore uh, data and, and the meal plan for our members. Um, but obviously we can't continue to do that. So uh, Chris wrote code, uh, not wrote code, but he in inserted this warning. If you change it from non-calendar to calendar, you will lose your work. Now, what you can do is just create, if you wanted a non-calendar methylation challenge and a calendar methylation, methylation challenge, just create two signature meal plans and identify them as such. One is for calendar and one is for the non-calendar. So that is the solution if you need both, but you just can't switch between the two. Okay, so we now have that warning here for you. All right, are there any questions on generating the PDF meal plan for your meal planner? Uh, okay, let me show you what it looks like. So I generated the meal plan. As a reminder, you do this. Let's just go back here, let's save. I'm going to go into the meal plan. I'll show you how to generate, and that'll bring us right to our full script conversation too. So we're gonna to go to our planner, the methylation challenge planner, could be any kind of challenge that you wanna create. And great. And then right here is our PDF generator. I'm going to include the cover page that I just designed, my intro page. Uh, I'm going to include the calendar, the groceries and nutrition, and I generate my PDF. And here's what it looks like. All right, so you now have the ability to change the cover page. You can uh, depress this white bar if you want to. I like it because it you know keeps the brand consistent and it has a nice title with your website. And then of course your introduction page. All right, now I want to just review again. We, we reviewed this last week, but it continues to be important to our community. How you can... Um, assign full script recommendations to clients. So let me go, I'm just gonna give you an example kind of at the client level, what it looks like. Caroline Genetics, uh, let's do, click on her meal planner. Hi, Heidi, welcome. So now I'm at the client level. When you're at the client level, you can also generate a PDF meal plan. So if you have a client, who is not into the digital experience. They're just like, give me a meal plan. Like I just, I just need ideas. They want to write on them. You know, I found uh, PDF meal plans helpful as training wheels to like really get people started. And we would mark it up in the counseling session. So I would print it in the office. And then uh, the, of course it didn't look as good as this four years ago, but um, print it in the office. And then you can just circle, say, look, I want you to make these three recipes this week, ignore everything else, just focus on these three recipes. And then the next time they come in, you can tackle other recipes. And that's how you can get 
forward um, forward process, um, forward progress, sorry. Uh, so that's a PDF at the client level. And then I just wanted to cover the full script because last uh, two weeks ago in our last Q&A, we did talk about the full script integration getting a huge upgrade. So you can now issue full script recommendations, you can edit full script recommendations, and you can view previous full script supplement recommendations. And this little full script icon up here is your client's reminder to you know, stay up to date with their supplement intake and their orders, right? So here is their active, their active full script recommendations will show inside of their planner. Okay, let me just click here. And I'm taken right into full script where I can edit and I can order. Now, it, one of the questions that we received was if you're making edits to someone's full script recommendation inside of your EHR, like healthier practice better, is it going to show up here in your living plate planner? The answer is yes, because as you saw that we just have the trigger inside of the client's meal planner here. But once you click on edit, they're brought to full script or you're brought to full script. You're both brought, brought to full script where they can either order or you can edit the recommendation, right? So all paths lead to the full script site and the recommendations. Uh, we're just giving you different spaces uh, through which to make those recommendations and to remind your clients to stay up to date on their um, supplement intake. Okay, Julie is asking a question. Can we include phone number and or email address in the uh, PDF cover page. I would include that, Julie, on your intro page. I would include your email and your contact information along with just some content, like reach out to me if you have any questions using the email below. That's the better space for it. Otherwise, the cover page is going to get a little crowded and it might get lost. You can make it larger inside of the intro page. So that's where I recommend you put that content. Um, Raksha is saying, why do I have such... Um, why do I, I'm not really sure what that means, Raksha, for a free trial and pay $9 a month. Um, I'm not sure the question. Raksha, can you rephrase that <laughs> so that I know? I, I just want to make sure I answer your question properly. I'm not sure I understand that. So the $9 per month, maybe that's um, what you're charging for meal plans per month. I'm not sure. So if you could re-ask that question, just be a little bit more specific about the answer that you're looking for. And I'm happy to help you. All right. So let me go back to my dashboard here. So I'm going to go into Caroline's account and I'm going to see her full script recommendations here. So she has an active full script recommendation. I can edit the recommendation here and I can create a new one. Uh, I, so this is where you're going to see all those current and past full script recommendations. But again, you can edit it here. You can add a new one here. It's just going to take you to full script. Um, but again, it will bounce back here to show you what that recommendation was. Okay. So Julie is asking, um, the only way you can search for recipes if you if you have set up a Stripe account. I think everybody's answering each other's questions. I'll, I'll stay out of that conversation. I'll come back to the thread later and uh, make sure that all of your questions are answered. Um, Okay, so Julie, your question is, we can't access recipes if we want to create a mocktail recipe book as a free copy for email addresses. Uh, you can, but yes, you do have to have that Stripe connection. If you want to have your Stripe connection disabled, let me know. Um, we can do that for you. But if you disable your Stripe uh, connection in your, I think that's what the question is. If you disable your Stripe connection to your dashboard, you're not going to be able to use these pre-populated meal plan URLs, right? So every time you create a meal plan or if you use one of our templates, let's go ahead and find our um, methylation challenge here. It's going to be my, under my signature plans. Here it is, show you what that looks like. I won't be able to use it. This link will be broken because there's no kind of payment gateway. The only reason why you have Stripe connected to your meal plan dashboard is so that you can collect the revenue generated from this page. We do not take a commission or we don't take any piece of it. Um, we just provide that as a courtesy to you so that you don't have to build landing pages should you wish to offer meal plans as a retail product. You don't absolutely don't have to. Michelle is asking, where can we find a tutorial for how to create the, the PDF meal planner? 
I'd love to do this, but I can't find the video. So that is in, Michelle, great question. I just demonstrated it. So you can just watch this again if you want to, or you can go back, just make sure that we're still screen sharing. Yes, we are. You can go back to your library, Michelle, go into the masterclass for the meal planner. And here there is how to generate a PDF. PDF generator function. Now I'm going to have to update this because you can, you now have some decisions you can make. You can just generate it as is and get this, you know, beautiful cover page, or you can change the cover page. And now you can also add the introduction page. All right. Um, I think that answered your question, Michelle. So go to your meal plan masterclass. Sarah Grace is asking, does Living Plate Rx give us a way to offer clients a food sensitivity test? We don't, we're not in EHR. So I think that most of the EHRs integrate with food sensitivity, sensitivity tests. So you can order that or issue that through your EHR. But once that food sensitivity test comes back, for example, if you're using Leap, we do have a Leap meal planner. Uh, so that would be pretty exciting for you. If you are a Leap, a CLT, a certified um, Leap therapist, uh, you will get access by request to a meal plan that uses only MRT ingredients. So the tested ingredients according to LEAP. So we do provide you with that meal plan, but it is by request. So um, Sarah Grace, if you are a CLT, let me know. Just send me an email or DM me and we will grant you access to that meal plan. We just don't make it a public meal plan because it will be confusing for most because it's blank. When you do the LEAP testing, um, you, everybody's different. So there is no standard plan. You just have to populate it with their green foods or their go foods versus their red foods. And so you'll easily be able to do that, Sarah Grace, inside of the LEAP meal planner. Okay. So who would I partner with to get sensitivity tests? Uh, I would reach out to um, the LEAP art organization. Julie said she's a CLT. So why don't you reach out to Julie, DM Julie, and she can support you with that information. Um, okay. And she's saying the LEAP meal planner is no longer blank. Huh? Interesting. I'll check on that. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> it should be. It should be blank. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our agenda here. So we've covered the PDF cover. We've covered a lot. <laughs> PDF cover page, their intro, your intro page. Um, we also uh, dove again into the full script integration. Really important if you are making supplement recommendations. Full script is really the gold standard for, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, for uh, really customer service for supplement recommendations, like the full circle, they get it right. Like your clients will, uh, you know, you make a recommendation, your clients will order the supplements and three days later, they're like on their doorstep Re and, and really excellent customer service. So we love our partners at full script. If anybody has any questions about it, let me know. If you do not have a full script account, you can create a free one, uh, inside of your, let me just go back here inside of your dashboard. So let's just go to account and you can see the our full script integrations. So if you don't have an, an account, it'll actually say create one here and you can just click on that and create a free full script account. One of the, the things that my clients and patients always appreciated was that I offered them a discount on supplements and you have that ability inside of full script to set a discount. So if people sign up for your course, It'd be really nice to offer that just as added value um, to your course. All right, perfect. All right, so we're exchanging emails and having a wonderful conversation on our Facebook group. So uh, good so far, clapping hand emojis if we're doing okay. Let's see here, perfect. Okay, so next up is payouts through Stripe. So great, we're on the right page. Let me go here and go up here. Okay, so inside of your account, you have all of your profile information, your login email, which you can now change. So if you've changed the name of your company or you have a new email, you can actually change your login email here. It will not automatically change your login for the Kajabi library. So just remember that. If you want to change your Kajabi library email, again, DM me or send us a ticket and um, through Zendesk down here, your little support bubble here, and we'll take care of you. 
All right. So to take a look at Stripe payouts, we had somebody um, who I think it was Constance uh, reached out to me yesterday. She's like, wow, speaking about passive income, I've been making money and I didn't even know it. Some some of her clients, patients or people who ended up on her website had opted into her monthly meal plans that she has posted on her website. And she had no idea. She had received a notification from Stripe that she had a payout. And she's like, what's this for? And so she logged into her Stripe account and was able to see it. But unless you log into your Stripe account, you're not going to see your payout. So you can click here to go to my Stripe dashboard and it's going to open up your, now I'm not going to do this now, but it, it's very secure. So it's going to send you a code um, to access your Stripe account. And once you do that, you will be brought into inside of Stripe. So off of Living Plate RX, and you'll be able to see your payouts if you do in fact uh, offer your meal plans as a retail product. Okay, so that's where you do that. You can also change uh, if you used Stripe to pay for your Living Plate Arts membership, you can update your payment details there as well. Everything happens there. We have uh, Stripe Express Connect. So it just takes you right in to Stripe using that link. Okay. Okay. Carmen is saying, I don't see that on my dashboard. It is in account. Carmen. So the, if, if you did not connect Stripe or for some reason, Carmen, we disabled Stripe on your account, it might not show. So reach out to me, like either DM me on Instagram or Facebook, and uh, we'll make sure that we get that fixed for you according to uh, kind of what you want to do in practice. So if you want to offer retail meal plans, you are going to need to have that connection. Okay. So has anybody been listening to the podcast who's on with me now? I mean, I know a ton of people have been listening because I, I can see that. And we've had, it's been really great. I started the podcast uh, about two months ago, a little more than two months ago. And the feedback from the community has been really awesome. Essentially, it's just another place where you can consume uh, supportive content. So it's just another place where I can support you with attracting, serving, and retaining your ideal clients. Uh, so I just wanted to review with you where you can find the podcast and kind of what topics we're exploring. I'm actually going to add to the suggestion box or that content recommendation, podcast topics. Because actually, why don't you type in right now, what, what is kind of keeping you awake at night with your nutrition and coaching practice? What's the one thing that you would want me to explore on the podcast on a deeper level? Can you drop some ideas in here? We'll just get get that started right now. Um, but I am going to include that podcast uh, recommendation kind of drop down inside of the content uh, suggestion. So what is the one kind of area that you would want me to explore inside of the podcast that you can listen while you're in the car, while you're out for a run or, you know, just chilling out. So you can go to Living Plate RX on the main page and all of the episodes that have already been published are here. Uh, so we have the latest one that was published this morning is called private practice content must haves. So if you have just opened your private practice, this is one you have to listen to because I really just kind of turned back time to when I opened up my private practice now seven years ago and kind of what I needed and what I had to scramble to kind of put together just to survive. And I poured it into a, uh, a resource for you and kind of walk you through it too, uh, as well in the podcast. So when you click on it, if you're on the website and you click on it, even from your phone, you'll be able to see it this way. Um, I have the show notes here. You can also listen to the podcast here. We're on all the podcast channels. And then if you scroll down, there is always a resource. It's, it's called the content cure. Every single episode has a content cure. So it's either going to be a bundle of content that demonstrates what I just talked about, right? So operationalizes whatever topic I explored, or it's going to be a guide to kind of help you get started with something. The content cure for this particular podcast is like intense. Like there's a lot, I think it's like a 17 page guide. I just poured tons of information in here for you. Uh, so you just click on that and you can download that guide. These guides also, by the way, are included as business tools in the library. So if you're already a member of Living Plate Rx community, that will be available to you in the business tools section kind of every month. I will be dropping in new content all the time. Hey, Liz, welcome. Okay, Celine is saying time management. How much time you spend on your business, on your business versus in your business? I love that, Celine. That's a great topic. Yeah, perfect, perfect. 
Uh, okay, so the next topic is going to be really cool. Um, I love. I was just talking to um, some colleagues this morning about the podcast that I just taped called uh, Edutainment. So it's about taking your educational content that are, if you're a member, you've got like tons and tons of that, right? You have a library filled with educational content. How do you take that educational content and add a layer of entertainment to it so that it resonates better with your ideal customer avatar? Uh, there is a good amount of research that supports that you kind of need to do that. So think about, you know, public health campaigns, right? So like stop smoking. They didn't just put up signs that say stop smoking and put all the information as to why you should stop smoking. They, and smoking is probably a poor example because you don't want to be really entertaining about smoking, but they did create, you know, messaging that was a little bit more catchy and that caught people's attention, that taught them the same lessons, but in a more dynamic way that resonated better with them, right? So, you know, if I used in the podcast episode, I used like a vitamin C handout. Like a vitamin C handout is great information to have, for somebody who needs to increase their intake of vitamin C, great to have in your practice. But how can you take something like that and add a layer of uh, entertainment to it? And it is not about dancing to trending sounds. So don't worry. I'm not going to tell you to find, if you do that, that's great. But you don't have to do that to create entertaining content. So the whole idea behind the upcoming episode is really to support you with using your content in a way that's going to resonate best with your ideal customer avatar. So you're not going to want to miss that one. That's going to come out next uh, Tuesday on July 4th. So, you know, if you're barbecue barbecuing or getting ready for your party, you can pop your earbuds in and listen. All right. Finding new and future content. We actually already covered this, but for those of you who are just joining us, you're going to want to go to, uh, let me just find out where I am here. Um, here we go. You're going to want to go to the front desk of your library. Click here and access the new table of contents. That is where you are going to see. You're going to click on this link here and it brings you here. This is where you're going to see all current and future content. Here's current content. That was 2022 and future content is going to be populated soon for August, September, October and moving forward. Raksha is saying, where can I find the podcast? Um, Raksha, it is at, where are we? Here, oh, I already closed it out. Did I? Yes, I did. Sorry. Oh, here it is. Uh, livingplaterx.com, Raksha. Just go to livingplaterx.com. Um, there is the login here for you to log into your dashboard. But if you don't log in, you can navigate to the podcast page, which is up at the top here. Okay. Great. Uh, moving on, I wanted to just give you an update. Oh, wait, let's see here. There we go. Um, just give you an update on our assessment tool pilot. So if you are part of our bio screen pilot, as a reminder, we are doing a 90 day pilot. 90 days? Yes, I think it's a 90 day pilot with a group of active practitioners who are using this uh, dynamic visual dietary assessment tool. It's a validated tool, it's called BioScreen, and it supports all of us, and it's going to support all of us with the assessment phase of the nutrition counseling process, right? So before you do anything, any type of counseling or coaching with your clients, you kind of need to know where they are. And one of the, you know, big benchmarks is what are you currently eating? <laughs> if we're going to change your dietary habits and try and try to drive positive health outcomes, we need to know where you are at this point in time. Uh, assessments have typically been pen to paper, food frequency questionnaires, or basically just a question like, what did you eat yesterday? They're not totally helpful. Patients and clients can feel like they're being judged. So for all of those reasons, we decided to seek out an assessment tool um, that was already built and validated for our community to use. And BioScreen was the partner that we chose. So we are currently doing a pilot. If you are a member of the pilot, I encourage you to, if you haven't already, you should have, but if you haven't already, really amp up your use of that tool. You need to issue that tool to a minimum of 10 clients. And when I say issue it, you need to issue 
and do a closing um, assessment as well. So we need to issue the assessment, give your patients some time to make change, and then issue the assessment again so that you have a measurement of progress. That is what we're looking for. And we are also looking for feedback from our community about use of the assessment tool. Did you enjoy it? Was it useful? How did it work in practice? Um, we have several community-based dietitians who are really using the tool, like running full classes, having 30 people at the beginning of the class take this assessment. And then at the end of the class, they're going to issue those same 30 people the assessment. And guess what? They're not only going to be able to measure progress of dietary intake, which at the end of the day, that's what really matters, right? What the clients are, are eating, mostly, I mean, you want to measure activity levels too, but really dietary intake, because that's what we focus on. You're going to measure those improvements to show progress. It's great for the patients and clients, and it's great for business because now you can justify what you do and you are using all of the Living Plate RX resources to support clients in making those dietary behavior changes. So we're really excited about this um, pilot and we just wanna make sure that everybody who signed up to use it is actually using it to, um, to the best of their ability inside of their practices. Okay, are there any other questions for me? I think we've come to the end now. That was a quick one. We got in in under an hour. <laughs> Uh, so, so great to spend time with you all here. I am always available to you inside of the Facebook group. Uh, remember to go into the library, experiment with our new search functionality, go into the meal planner, experiment with the PDF generator. Like once you do the PDF cover page and intro page once, all you have to do is duplicate that for other meal plans. And you'll have like this whole suite of custom meal plans, like in less than an hour, you'll be able to have all of this. Um, let's see, we have another question. Oh, just a thanks. Oh, Connie, you're welcome. You're very welcome, Connie. Carrie, good to see you here. Uh, so uh, library search tool, your goals. Library search tool, I want you to check that out. Go into your meal planner, check out the PDF generator. If you don't already have a full script account and you're interested in making supplement recommendations, create a free account and start experimenting with issuing recommendations to clients. And then um, check out the podcast episodes, because again, it's another area where I can support you with scaling your practices, um, just in other space where I can do that but in, in, in uh, with audio, right? So just something different versus the emails that go out every Friday. So look for those two for support. And of course, inside the Facebook group. All right, we're good. Um, Stacy has a question. Is there a way to delete a meal plan without deleting each item individually? Hmm. Uh, you, you can delete a signature plan. Just there's an, uh, is that what you mean, Stacy? Or you just want to wipe it clean and start over. I mean, if you wanted, if you, if you have a fully populated meal plan and you want to start over, just create another signature plan and delete that one. I wouldn't waste your time deleting every recipe in that meal plan. Um, because that, it's not necessary. Uh, let me show you where you can do that, Stacy. Okay, you're going to go into your signature meal planner. By the way, we're going to unnest this. We don't need to have it behind this tab. Eventually that's going to happen. So you're just going to go inside of your signature meal plan and you're just going to cancel the plan. Now, if you cancel a plan, let me just cancel this for example, I'll show you. Um, it comes up with a pop-up that says, if you have anybody using this plan, they are going to immediately be given access to whatever the base plan was, right? So this eliminates kind of errors of deleting meal plans and then breaking all kinds of links for clients. If you have clients who are subscribing to a meal plan, don't delete it. Um, so we, and we give you this warning to kind of consider that like, okay, if you have anybody who's already subscribed or you've issued this meal plan to, if you cancel it, they're gonna be sent back to the originating plan that you used to create the signature plan. So um, does that answer your question, Stacy? You're just going to remove that meal plan and I am sure, so it's asking me twice now, I am deleting the chef's meal plan because I know that I didn't have anybody subscribing to that. So that's how you can delete it and then just create a new one. Michelle is asking, am I correct that we are currently having two places to log in, one for the meal planner and one for the library? Michelle, yes. It's really, it's no different than what, oh wait, I wasn't sharing my screen. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> wait, let me just 
Stacy, sorry. Sorry about that. It happens all the time because I'm not looking at the window. Go to your signature planner. You're going to let's I'll pick another one to delete. <laughs> no problems. Uh, here we go. We're just going to click cancel. Click the X and you're going to remove the meal plan and you're going to click OK. And remember, they will be sent to what if it was the anti-inflammatory meal plan, the flex meal plan. If you had somebody subscribing to that plan, they're automatically going to be sent to the other meal plan. Sorry about that. Sarah Grace, I got that. I just showed it again. OK, so that you can delete the plans here. But again, just duplicate. All right, um, let's go back to Michelle's question. <laughs> yes, there are. There, I mean, like, yes and no, Michelle, there are two places right now. We are eventually working toward with, I would say within a year, we'll have the solution. Everything's going to be in one place. Right now we have our proprietary meal planner, which is what you're looking at now. This is, this is proprietary space. We built this from scratch, the platform and all of the content on it is ours. So this is the meal planner. To access the library, you simply click on go to library and it will open up your login for the library and your it'll populate. I don't even know what that email is, but it should be your email should be the same for both. Sometimes it's not. So for all of you who are sending us um, tickets about not being able to log into your Kajabi uh, library, it's probably because you have multiple emails inside of Kajabi. That's a really easy fix for us. So just send us an email and we'll fix that for you. Um, but yes, you log in to Kajabi and you will get into the library there. It's not a single sign-on. Unfortunately, Kajabi doesn't have single sign-on, which is shocking, but true, <laughs> sadly. Uh, yeah. So just log in, but Michelle, you can always log in. You don't have to go to kajabi.com. You can always access that right here inside of your living plate RX prime dashboard. Was that helpful, Michelle? Let me know if that's helpful. Okay. Stacy has a question. I am creating a three day meal plan for a retreat. So I want to use the flex plan and create all new. Perfect. Then Stacy, you are going to create a signature plan called the retreat meal plan or whatever you're going to be calling your retreat. And you're just going to use the flex plan as the base. And then you're going to, you, you, you can, you populate it. The flex plan is only three days. So it's pretty easy. I see what you're saying. So you wanted a blank meal plan with the flex as the recipe base. Um, yeah, I don't think that you can do that. No, you can't do that. That's a really good question. You should make you make that suggestion on the uh, on this in the suggestion box because I think that actually would be helpful for someone like you if you are creating from scratch. You just want a blank meal planner, like a custom meal planner, but you don't want the total custom uh, recipe base. You want the flex plan recipe base. That's actually a really good idea, Stacy. So if you wouldn't mind entering that into the suggestion box. We can add that to our development schedule. For now, take a look at the flex plan that comes up and replace, you know, just replace uh, what you don't want. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I misunderstood your first question, but uh, yeah, you've identified something that we can improve on. So that's great. Carrie is asking, is there a way to remove the meals they don't want to plan for, like removing the breakfast area because they don't want a smoothie for breakfast? Um, no, you can, all of our meal plans have breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner at a minimum. Those fields cannot be popular, cannot be removed, but you don't have to add anything to them either. So, you know, it's really just an aesthetic, like breakfast meal cell will appear, but there's nothing in it. My recommendation is to include hydration reminders because we did have a practitioner at one point in time say she didn't want to offer snacks. She wanted to offer breakfast, lunch, and dinner only. So in the snack field, she put hydration opportunities. So things like water, which is on the meal plan, or um, unsweetened tea or hot tea, uh, mocktails, things like that. So use those cells as opportunities for hydration. So breakfast, perfect example. If somebody doesn't want to have anything for breakfast, like maybe they just wake up late or the, it's like shift work or something, insert um, hydration opportunities. That's going to be your, your best approach. Um, or a snack. You know, breakfast does not have to be a smoothie or oatmeal. It could be, you know, red pepper slices with hummus, which I have sometimes for breakfast. I actually don't eat. Uh, sweet breakfast too often. So, all right. I think that that answered the question. Is that good, Carrie? Does that work for you? 
Love that idea. Thanks again. Yeah. I mean, there's always something that they can be, you know, doing to improve their dietary intake. And hydration is one that we actually often forget. So just insert water or coffee or tea um, to honor kind of what that client wants that meal plan to look like. Okay, great. All right, we're done. Um, here we go. Come to hello. Great. We're done for today. If you are watching this as a recording, uh, please feel free to continue to comment and you can tag me and my team and I will get back to you. If you are watching on LinkedIn uh, or YouTube, please join our private Facebook group, Scale Your Nutrition Practice, and join our lively conversation. Just such a great group of colleagues. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, next week, we I think next week we're skipping for coaching calls for Karen, um, and she'll pick that up again the following week because next week in the United States is a holiday week, uh, falls right in the middle of the week on a Tuesday. Uh, so the coaching call, I think it's that following week, and then we'll pick up again with our Q and a calls as usual. Raksha is saying a great session. Carrie, love this idea. Thanks again. You're welcome. Terrific. I will see you guys inside of the Facebook group and make sure that you follow the podcast so that you don't miss anything there. Okay. Talk soon, everyone. Bye.